Welcome back to Inspiring Builds. I'm Dan, and in this video, I'm going to push the limits, including attempting to cut through a 2x4, do a high-level unboxing assembly, and cover some awesome projects on what is arguably the best laser engraver for 2024. The cutting power is incredible, cutting through a variety of wood, acrylic, and steel with a single pass. The technology the machine comes with is advanced for its class, making it more powerful and efficient against its peers. You can also make your project stand out by engraving up to 500 plus shades of color. Watch until the end to see the final results of the 2x4, and don't miss out as I put together a variety of 8 builds with this machine the first couple of days I had it. This is the 22 watt Alpha Laser Engraver from Algo Laser, who is a newer company who shipped this machine to me so more people can learn about them and see for yourself how awesome their engravers are. If you're new here, please make sure to hit that subscribe button and turn on those bell notifications so you don't miss any of these tutorials. The Algo laser is very well packaged with sufficient packaging material. Included in the top tray is a user manual and sample materials. The instructions are well documented and has clear colored images to reference for assembly. The samples package includes a brush, zip ties, velcro, and test materials to cut ranging from acrylic, metal, to wood. Next is the rear panel of the engraver frame. The front panel, a power adapter, a toolkit with the hardware to assemble and service the machine, safety goggles, the power adapter cord, a USB cable to connect the engraver to a PC or laptop, air hose lines, an air pump along with the air pump control module. Next is the right frame rail. The left frame rail, gantry, and laser module with one of my favorite features why I wanted this machine as it has a strong magnetic detachable laser head. Lastly is a still transfer bar to connect the Y-axis drive belts together that runs on each side of the engraver. Step 1 is the frame assembly. Start with the front of the frame and be cautious of the motherboard during assembly. Simply slide the side rails into the front and rear panels and secure the corners with three screws per corner from the top and side. Tighten all three screws loosely at first and then fully tighten them down once all three screws are threaded. Algo Laser is 2 for 2 so far. Along with it being packaged very well, they also have the bulk of the laser engraver pre-assembled to make assembly quick and easy. Step 2 is connecting the Y-axis motor. Flip the frame upside down and insert the cable into the Y-axis motor. Flip the frame back over. Step 3 is to assemble the X-axis assembly. E with the end of the cable box should face B. Screw it down with two screws on each end. Step 4 is to connect the limit switch. Insert the Y-axis limit switch terminal into the adapter of the cable box. Step 5 is mounting the laser assembly. Pull down the lever and install the laser module on the fixture. Lift up the lever to secure it into place. Insert the air pipe into the hole of the laser module. Cable management is excellent on this machine. Plug in the other end of the air line in the back. Then put the last section of air line into the side and run the air pipe and main cable through the hole under the Y axis. Step 6 is connecting the cable to the main board. Insert the cables into the ports of the main board. They are color coded so it's easy to match up. Step 7 is to assemble the motor extension shaft. Slide on the coupling on each side but do not tighten them down yet. The X-axis must be pushed to the end before installing the motor extension shaft. This is to ensure that the shaft remains parallel, allowing the belt to operate smoothly, ensuring optimal engraving results. Install the motor extension shaft into each coupling. Tighten down both screws on the coupling on both ends. Step 8 is to tighten the belt. Install a screw into the tension hole. Manually test the movement of the laser module to ensure it operates smoothly. If it operates smoothly, then the belt has the correct tension. Insert two screws into the tension holes on D. These are the two longer screws. 
Pluck the belt on each side to ensure they sound the same. If they don't sound the same, adjust the tension until both sounds are alike. Adjust the tensioner limit screw, but do not over tighten it as it will prevent belt adjustment. The kit comes with Velcro and zip ties. I use Velcro to neatly secure the wires together. Step 9 is to connect the air pump. Insert the power cable into the input output socket. Install the air pipe on top of the air pump and connect the other end of the air pipe with the metal connector to the pipe on the machine. Step 10 is connecting the power supply. Insert the power cord into the 24 volt 4 amp socket to power the machine. Insert the USB cable into the USB port and the other end gets connected to a computer to establish a connection between the computer and the machine. I do highly recommend to use the air pump when using the machine. To increase the air, press the plus button or decrease the air with the minus button. Failure to use the air pump will affect the laser module's lifespan and decrease the engraving quality. Assembly was simple with only one small issue when kickstarting the machine with the machine making this noise. The bracket on the back side of the laser module came in contact with the cable management clip and the fix was to simply push in the clip to allow for clearance for the laser module to travel. I think of safety first with this machine, with both an emergency stop switch that must be in the raised position and a key that needs used to unlock the machine, as well as to lock the machine to prevent it from being used. Hold the power button for about 5 seconds on the laser machine to kick start. Connecting the laser engraver to a PC was super easy. Plug in the USB and under device manager, a USB device will appear under the ports. No driver is needed, but pay attention to the COM number, minus 3. Start the software, I prefer using Lightburn and linking it to the engraver just takes a few seconds. Click Find My Laser, ensure the USB is plugged in, and click Add Device. Name your laser engraver and the dimensions are already populated. If adding manually, it's 400 by 400 and click Next to finish the setup. Select your laser engraver name and click OK. Change the drop down from Auto to COM3 and it's ready to start engraving. Before starting, I recommend changing a couple of device settings by turning on the laser fire button and selecting to turn on the laser when framing. Next, click on the move tab, select fire, and the power can be turned up to view the laser. I run mine at 1%. Before starting projects with a new laser, I highly recommend doing material test. For the cut test, I set the speed range from 100 millimeters a minute to 500 millimeters a minute and the power from 20% to 100%. I did 9 squares for round even power percentages and speed numbers and since I had a larger test piece, I changed the height and width to 10 millimeters for larger test squares. You can change the settings to turn on the air assist when cutting and off when engraving so you don't have to control it with the air pump control module. The speed and max power can be changed to your preference as well. I like to save my settings by clicking the disc and entering the preset name to match the description. Hit the preview button and you see all speeds have round increments of 50 and power has round increments of 10. The test will take approximately 19 minutes. I hit frame to ensure my test piece was centered. An awesome feature is the spring-loaded focus stick. Simply pull down on the lever to lock it and set the focus, then push the button to release it. After setting the focal point, simply hit the start button to start the job. I was happy with the outcome, and with this being 3mm material, I have had much success cutting material at 350mm a minute with 80% power. Repeat the same process for the engraving test. I set the speed range from 4000 to 20000 and left the power at 20% to 100%. I like saving time in the future and save this test as well. I want to thank you if you made it this far in the video. If you have, let me know what project you would make on a laser and I will be sure to answer any questions you have first in the comments. Once the material tests are complete, I will show a range of projects I already completed with this laser from Algo Laser. I again was happy with the outcome and have a good range of lights and darks as well as deep engravings with a single pass. Now that the testing is complete, we can start having fun with some builds. It's important to do material tests to dial in the correct speed and power settings on the machine based on the material being used. I always preview the project first and then frame it out. On each of the projects I list the settings for the speed, power, and number of passes. In addition, I list the time of each project. Hopefully you find this helpful, if so let me know. The first build is a cell phone holder that holds 5 slots to hold pens in the back and I added my logo completing a cut and engraving project on the first build. 
I got excited about this one, but recommend to engrave first before cutting. Next up are wooden plant stakes. No longer worry about the plastic ones that the writing gets washed away with weather. I'm gifting these and really look forward to seeing them in the garden. If you've been following my channel, I've posted a few videos on wooden Christmas trees the past month and how to make an extra couple thousand dollars this holiday season. These trees add a nice touch to your holiday decor. My son loves being creative and has always had a passion for dinosaurs. This is thick cardstock and only took 40 seconds to cut out. Small things like this can make someone's day and for me it's important to see my family happy. He also likes dragons, so I moved on to layered projects. These are good projects to get everyone involved making. I love the attention to detail this young man has. I quickly spray painted each piece and you can see how the two colors pop nicely with the layered project. I built a simple crosscut slit on my table saw a couple of months back and wanted to dress up the front. A three layer logo I thought was the perfect touch. I really wanted to test the engraving on this machine and see what it could do on a larger project. Ventilation is key for engravers, especially longer run times. With the material being white, the suit was much more visible. I hit it with compressed air and cleaned it with white vinegar. My final thoughts are I would highly recommend this machine. With the price point, it's a great value where you can quickly make your money back on your investment in a short period of time. It's built solid with safety in mind. It arrived mostly pre-assembled, so assembly was a piece of cake. It has automatic air assist with a ton of awesome features. The removable magnetic laser shield is my favorite and the clamping system with the spring loaded focus tool is an awesome touch. I love the cable management. The cost technology sets it ahead of the pack from other lasers in its class. It's really powerful with high speed that you would not expect from a 20 watt machine. If I had to give suggestions for improvement, it would be to create a similar machine with a larger bed However, I have completed projects on this laser that is two to three times the size of the bed. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, I have other videos queued up for you that you'd probably like as well. I will also create my next video focusing on laser projects that you won't want to miss. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Like, comment, share, and hit that notification bell so you can get notified when I release new videos.